Hello, Tibia Timers! If you watched our last video, you would have seen us exploring the Bolt Horse Spawn for the very first time. However, after a month of hunting here, I'm proud to announce that we got better at our pulls and significantly improved our EXP gain. No more looking for that lower left rib cage. So in this video, we will walk you through a mostly successful hunt as a full team at level 475 and above. In order to reach this spawn, you'll have to complete up to the Boltor mission in the 20 Years of Cook quest. The spawn is located in the Plains of Havoc, underneath the cemetery near the Pits of Inferno entrance. Just simply walk through the trash can and you'll be immediately greeted by Boltors. This cave has two huntable floors, however our research indicated that minus two was the favorable floor that yielded more creatures and larger pulls. There are three creatures in this spawn, the Boltor Brute, the Boltor Alchemist, and the Boltor Forge Priest. These three creatures will require 2,500 kills to unlock 50 charm points each, and unlocking them shouldn't take very long. Since the Boltor Brutes and Alchemists are significantly weak to Earth, it is recommended to use Earth-based attacks here. As for the main damage you'll be receiving, it's mostly energy and physical with a little bit of death, ice, and holy, so wear equipment accordingly. For this reason, as the MS of the group, I wore a Gnome Helmet, a Dream Shroud, Soul Shanks, Stoic Ix Sandals, Soul Tainter, Shoulder Plate, Enchanted Theurgic Amulet, Prismatic Rings, and the Lit Torch Trinket. However, I realized after the fact that I should have worn the Nightmare Boots and the Umbral Master Spellbook that were just sitting in my backpack instead, since approximately 50% of the damage I took was from energy. Noob Mistakes The imbuements I had consisted of two powerful Mana Leech, one powerful Life Leech, one powerful Magic Level, and one powerful Crit. As for the Paladin, Druid, and Knight, these are the equipment that each of them wore. I'll leave timestamps for their perspectives so you can view their imbuements, supplies, and damage types throughout the hunt. It is also recommended for everyone to wear a prismatic ring because of the physical and energy protection, void boots if you have them for the energy protection, and a handful of ultimate healing runes as a sorcerer for that extra healing on the night. Since this wasn't our first rodeo, we had already unlocked their charm points. I had set poison on brute, Freeze on Forge Priest, and Inflame on the Alchemist. Here's a look at the rest of the team's configuration. As for our Wheel of Destiny, Bubble Tea and I had Stage 1 Gift of Life, Sushi had Stage 2 Divine Grenade, and Hot Pot had Stage 1 Twin Burst. None of us had any praise active at this time. There are different routes one can take while hunting here, and it will all depend on your level, skill, and comfortability. But be warned, you'll most likely never encounter a single creature, but rather a horde of them all at once. We learned that very quickly the first time here. For us, we found our groove going clockwise, making six large poles in the following areas. An alternative route would be making a loop around the south side, but that proved to be too much of a challenge for us as a group of four, but would be optimal if you have a larger hunting party. For our hunt that lasted just over an hour, we managed to hit 5.5 Brog EXP per hour with 2.175k in profit between the four of us. As mentioned earlier, this spot is great for getting charms as we killed 745 alchemists, 949 brutes, and 632 forge priests. As for the supplies, I used approximately 450 ultimate mana potions and 520 stone shower runes. Here's a quick snapshot of the team supplies as well. As a conclusion, even though we've improved our pulls, this is still quite a dangerous hunting spawn for even the most seasoned players. Just the sheer amount of creatures alone in each pull along with their hard hitting attacks can easily result in getting trapped or comboed, as you will see towards the end of the video. However, the good definitely outweighs the bad and it's actually a pretty fun spawn once you get used to it. It's also a great alternative to busier spawns such as dragons, ingol, or ice library since those are often taken. Let us know what you think about this spawn or if you have any other areas you'd like us to check out. If you're enjoying our content, please feel free to hit that like button and subscribe. Thanks, and we'll catch you in the next one. Bye!